listen, and I will tell you a tale. Listen, and I will tell you a tale of apples, and of sellers, and of Canadians, and of space travel, and above all, I will tell you a story about our DNA. I will tell you the story, the invisible story, of radon. Now it is said that light in the absence of eyes illuminates nothing. That is a quote spoken by scientist Trevor Goodchild in the science fiction series Eon Flux by Peter Chung. Essentially it means if we are not looking at it, an object, no matter how illuminated, is essentially invisible. Radon is just such an object. It is something that we have known about for more than a century. It is something that for more than two generations we have known as a killer. But it's because we have not been looking at it, it has been essentially invisible to the public eye. In this case, light has illuminated nothing. Now, radon is not only figuratively invisible, it is literally invisible. It's also tasteless and odorless and colorless. And what is dangerous about it is that as it arises from the breakdown of radium minerals found in the soils all throughout this part of the world, it's radioactive. It emits a type of radiation called alpha particle radiation, which is very similar to that we encounter up in space. Now, alpha particles, although they don't move very far, move incredibly quickly, indeed at half the speed of light, with sufficient energy to put a dent in a piece of bulletproof plastic. Imagine what that does inside your bodies. Even more dangerous, radon precipitates. As it emits alpha particle radiation, it transforms. It becomes solids called radon daughters, a variety of different elements that will fall out inside your lungs. Some of those, including things like radioactive lead 210, will continue to emit radiation inside your bodies for decades after the initial exposure. Now, all of us are born with nice, intact DNA, half of which is from mom and half of which is from dad. As alpha particles wreak havoc inside our bodies. What happens is it reacts with the very water that comprises our cells, weaponizing that, turning it into highly reactive oxygen species that will go ahead and react, breaking apart our DNA, our very thing that makes us who we are, generating mutations that will drive cancer. Now, this is much more dangerous than the common X-ray, another type of radiation. As X-rays move through us, they do so quite quickly, depositing widely spaced energy that creates DNA damage. Your bodies and my body heals very easily. However, alpha particles from radon, they move through us with incredible amount of energy, depositing such a swathe of genetic destruction, our bodies simply cannot heal that accurately, transforming our nice, normal cells into these genetic monsters which drive cancer inside us. Now, it's perhaps unsurprising, given what I just told you, that radon is classified by health authorities as a category one cancer-causing agent, a carcinogen. In the same broad category, meaning we absolutely know it is a cause of human cancer uh, alongside asbestos, tobacco, and even mustard gas. Even less surprisingly, given the fact that Canadians have unwittingly built all of our cities across some of the most radon-generating geologies on Earth, 10 to 40,000 of us succumb to radon-induced lung cancer each decade. Those who are succumbing to such cancers are likely those, the one in 30 amongst us who are radiation sensitive, but who would never ever know it until you're exposed to radiation. Now, radon actually is a Canadian discovery. In 1904, Ernst Rutherford wrote a book, this book, in fact, called Radioactivity, in which he described radon as the, radi as described radon as the radium emanation. For a radioactive source, he observed emitting from solid radium minerals in his lab. And in that book, he actually described our radon problem. 1904, he writes, Thus, there can be little doubt that the abnormal activity observed in caves and cellars is due to a radioactive emanation present in the earth which gradually diffuses to the surface and collects in places where the air is not disturbed. 1904, Ernst Rutherford at McGill shone the light on radon. But other than a select few, nobody was looking. The light, in this case, illuminated nothing. We now know that or Rutherford was absolutely right. Radon that comes out of the ground, say in your front lawn in a field, dilutes to almost nothing instantaneously. But in human-made structures, your homes, our schools, our workplaces, 
it accumulates. And it accumulates to quite dramatic levels sometimes. Very, very hazardous concentration. So while it is a natural thing, what is unnatural is the way our buildings concentrate it to very hazardous levels. Now, we can measure this. We're using a few tricks. One is such thing as a cloud chamber. If you go out into the lobby, you'll see a demonstration of a cloud chamber. Basically, a little fish tank of supercooled alcohol vapor that as those alpha particles move through, they disturb and make a little cloud trail. This is a very low radon containing environment. This, however, is a very high radon containing environment. Every single one of those little emissions of an alpha particle, you measure the number of those per second, that's how we measure radon, the Becquerel. Now, of course, in houses, we have a much more accurate way of doing this. We have these little hockey pucks. And in those little hockey pucks is a little square of bulletproof CR39 plastic. And as I said before, those alpha particles bulleting at half the speed of light, they dent that plastic. High-powered microscopes can count the dots. That tells us how much radon is in there. Now, the amount of radon emitting alpha particles at a given time, that's great. We need to know that. But what's more impactful for human health is the amount absorbed. Now, to put this into context, I'd like to, you all to envisage yourself as sitting under an apple tree. In this case, the radon is the tree. The alpha particles are the apples. And the number that hit you and hurt you, that's the absorbed dose. So the overall number of apples that fall from the tree, well, that's the becquerels. That's those alpha emissions every second. But the number that actually hit you, that's the sievert. That's the absorbed dose that has a measurable effect on human health. Now, to put that into context, let's envision one dental x-ray, 0.01 of a millisievert. Very low dose of radiation, almost meaningless. Get your dental x-ray, your teeth will thank you, OK? This is a chest x-ray, 10 of those. 10 dental x-rays is roughly equivalent to a chest x-ray. You break a rib, get one of those. You, again, your, your body will thank you. This is a CT scan much higher dose of radiation. If you have a medical need and your physician prescribes you a CT scan, for example, you may have a traumatic brain injury, get one. If you have the sniffles, you do not have a CT scan. It is a very high dose of radiation. We take one CT scan worth of radiation, multiply it by this much. That's how much was coming out of the, the meltdown at Fukushima back in March of 2011, nuclear disaster. A substantial dose of radiation that significantly increases lifetime risk of cancer. Now, please keep these in mind, because I'm going to come back to radon in a second and equate that to this. But before I do that, I need to tell you about how we know about radon in homes. And like many scientific discoveries, it was an accident. This is Stanley. And just before Christmas in 1984, Stanley started his new job at the Limerick nuclear power plant at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And what was really weird one morning when he went into work is he went in and all the radiation alarms went off, bells, sirens, you name it. Very strange, but not when any of his colleagues walked in. Even weirder, when he went home, nothing happened. Well, even more strange, there was no nuclear material in the plant yet. They haven't even turned on the reactors. It was still under construction. Turns out, Stanley's house was an astonishing 99,900 becquerels worth of radiation, the equivalent of 10 million dental x-rays worth of radiation. As he walked into work, there were so many radon daughters pouring off his clothes that those nuclear disaster alarms triggered and went off. Thus, the discovery was made between radon and domestic exposure in our houses, our schools, our workplaces. Health authorities kicked into gear, the US EPA, Health Canada. They started to issue some warnings, but by and large, nobody was looking. The light illuminated nothing, okay? And that's where our story could have ended. That's where, in fact, for many decades, it remained. However, something started to change only a few years ago, at least in this part of the world. A few scientists got together, and knowing that radon is the number one way we are exposed to radiation in our lifetime, decided to test their houses. And a few more people got interested in that. And a few more eyes opened to Ernst Rutherford's discovery. And a few more people got in. And the community got involved. I want to test my house. No, I want to test my house, and more and more. Until so many people were looking that the light illuminated everything and the eyes were open. We now know that one in eight Alberta houses exceeds Health Canada's maximum acceptable radon limit of 200 becquerels per cubic meter. One in two exceed where we start to see a, a statistically significant increase in the lifetime risk of lung cancer. Even more alarmingly, if we break out the houses by the year they're built, although older properties from 1890 to the middle of last century, one in 13 of those had high radon, already alarming. Now today, that's almost triple. One in five new properties 
built in the 21st century exceed that maximum acceptable guideline? What are we doing wrong? This is something we have to figure out. Now, I am sure I have terrified you. <laughs> and you're worried. And I'm not apologizing. Because lung cancer is a very scary thing. Very scary. And is com for this cause, radon, it is completely and utterly preventable. It is very easy to fix. And it is starting right now because your eyes have illuminated to Ernst Rutherford's discovery back in the day. Okay? Now, this is fixable. You can test your house. I told you how to do that. Very easy, straightforward. If your house comes back low, great. Knowledge is power. Rest easy. If your house comes back high, doesn't matter. It's fixable. We already have extremely efficacious technology to fix our house. Then you celebrate. Couple of days work in the house, minor home renovation costs. Does it work? Yes, it does. We know because we looked. Here's a hundred houses in red with unacceptably high radon, and those the same houses in blue after mitigation, all perfectly fine for this. So this is a story with potentially a very happy ending. And if I asked you, if you could do something that could potentially save the lives of 40,000 Canadian children over the next decade, would you do it? Would you use that knowledge? Because light in the presence of eyes illuminates everything. Using science helps. And we can make change. We can tell our young people. We can tell our legislators, our lawmakers, and we can pass laws like just was passed before Christmas, the first ever Canadian Radon Testing and Awareness Act right here in Alberta. We now protect our childcare facilities. But wait, I was promised space travel, you say, and you were, and that's perhaps the coolest part, because as I said, Radon is very similar to the type of radiation that we see up, up there in space. And by understanding the biology of alpha particles, how, who is sensitive, who is not sensitive, how we can protect ourselves, so we will take humanity out there into the stars to explore the universe. And we will do that by evicting radon from our homes right here in Alberta. If you want to evict radon from your house, test for how, what it is, please visit evictradon.ca and get a test, and you can also contribute your results anonymously to me, scientists, and we will take that forward and make a difference. Thank you very much.